So I saw another video from uh, Joshua Fluke that I thought we should watch, so let's watch it. Gen Z are an employer's nightmare. My 20s put them to shame. Like most of my peers, I hustled at all hours for my career, a far cry from this minimum effort generation and their lazy girl jobs. This is Sophia. She's a British journalist and author at The Telegraph. A few days ago, she wrote- Bro, people had it so much easier back in the day. They, they just cannot comprehend how much more difficult it is nowadays. If you want a decent paying job at this point, you have to become a YouTuber. And in order to become a YouTuber, you have to build a whole bunch of skills over the course of your life that are really, really difficult to teach people and necessitate that you have super high intelligence levels in order to be able to understand them. And it's it's ridiculous. This, this kind of nonsense of, oh, I, I hustled so much more. No, you didn't. These people are busy 24 hours a day of their life. And when they're sleeping, they're dreaming about being busy. That's what they're doing now. wrote this article about how she out-hustled Jen Z because they care more about work-life balance than ours. This article is written from the standpoint of what Yeah, we care about work-life balance because that's the battle of our of our generation is the battle of trying to get these jobs to pay you enough money so that you don't have to work 90 hours a week. Because most jobs nowadays don't even pay they they pay you just enough money so that you can survive and then they try to take up all of your free time so that you can't do anything else to make more money feels like an overused movie character. When a wealthy person states something condescending, thinking everyone will agree with them, but just proceeds to make a fool of themselves, yeah. that's this article. Honestly, the title of this article should be How My Silver Spoon Put Them to Shame. Before I show you the article, I really think you need to know where she comes from because it really adds context to how tone deaf oh, this I hope article she's is. A Nepo Let baby. me put this into perspective. Miss Sophia Moneycoots here. Yep, that's how you say her name. She's the daughter of Lord Crispin James something something the ninth baron. Bro, let's look at this. British peer who was a descendant of both the well-known Irish nationalist Thomas Addis Emmett and the banker Thomas Coots in 2003. He inherited the title Baron Lotmeyer from his father. Bro, this person is the child of a baron. And they're they're out here saying how they've out-hustled all of Gen Z. It's, it's insane levels of nepotism and just lack of understanding of what normal people have to go through. The way that people who started past lap three of the race are yelling at people who started at negative 30 of the race is insane. There are some people who are born into a situation where their parents are addicts and their parents are taking out credit cards in their children's names and spending up huge amounts of debts before the child even has any idea what's going on. There are times where children inherit defaulted loans because their parents did this to them and they have to work just to be able to pay off this if they want to have any semblance of a decent credit score. And people like this think that they are somehow the one, that they just did everything right. I, I'm so much smarter than you. Everyone else should just be smart like me. Brother, it's an RNG game. That's what it is. You were born with really good numbers. Most people aren't born with really good numbers. Stop shaming them for being born with bad numbers. There are people out here who are really trying their best and just had a bum start, and it's taking them a much longer time to get to where they need to go. If you have parents who aren't super intelligent, if you have parents who who didn't know how things worked, you're going to have to figure out all that for yourself versus if you had somebody from the get-go to tell you how things work, that's a much easier role to play. It's so much simpler. How is that an argument that people have? That if you have a better start in life, your life is simpler? I, and, and how is it an argument that people have that there are starts in life that are so bad that you would have to be a one in a trillion person to be able to get out of it? I hate this concept of if I can do it, anyone can do it. No, that's not how it works. You had something going on. You you might have had plenty of struggles yourself, but you also might have been the type of person who was perfect to solve those struggles. And this isn't a game where everything is planned out and there's always a way out for you. Sometimes there's not. And I think it's an underpinning of religion. I really do that we believe that it's all God's plan, you know, whatever. What if it's not? If we consider for one second that it's not, that this is all randomized chaos, and there have been a bunch of things that have been set into motion in the past, and all those dominoes continue to follow throughout or fall throughout time, and now we're here, and people are being affected by dominoes that fell hundreds and thousands of years ago, 
maybe for a second we can decide that there are some people that just are not going to be able to succeed, but they're still human beings. You know? You ever think about that? That they are still people and they literally can't succeed? I'm not trying to patronize other human beings. If you can get out of a bad situation, you're amazing and you did a great job and I'm really proud of you, genuinely. But if you can't get out of a bad situation, if everything you touch turns to shit for some reason, I don't think that's always your fault. I don't. And I think that it's a super self-involved, really stone heart way to go about thinking about the world around you that other people are worse than you because they haven't been able to succeed where you could. I think you should thank your lucky stars for what you've been able to do, genuinely. Her family founded the Coots Private Bank, and if you've never heard of that bank before, it's because you don't have enough money to bank with them. You see, that <laughs> cool. bank currently serves some of the wealthiest British families that exist, including the royal family. Anyways, yeah. her father, money Sir opens Crispy doors. Here, married a woman named Lucy Deeds, who was, fun fact, a master of foxhounds. Like her mom would be the person who managed the dogs and teams that go hunting and killing foxes just for fun. Think rich British people sports. You know yeah. the ones that were only outlawed in, like, the 2000s? Anyway, Sophia's mom was the daughter of a Spiffing man named Bill Deeds, <laughs> that kind of thing. who happened to be a long time editor at the Telegraph where she currently works. So after reading the title, Nepotism. you can kind of see where this is going. Yes. So Deeds, what's new? I found out I have an uncle, but he died. Oh, that's too bad. He gave me $40 billion though. Well, that's nice. Oh yeah. Don't you go and spend it all on some fancy record player. Oh, and her brother, I guess, is a magician. <laughs> Actually seems kind of cool. Their name is really Money Coots? That's insane that their name is Money Coots. I thought this was some kind of joke that he was making that was going over my head. That's their real name. The word money is in their name. But she out-hustled all of us, right? Well, to be honest, we just didn't hustle hard enough. We just didn't sleep little enough. We should have worked hard. We should have got up off the couch and went to the gym more. And we could have been born into, into billions of dollars of wealth, just like her. Right, guys? Today's sponsor is Magical. If you're a fan of the anti-hustle, here's a tool to make your life even easier. They're a free-to-download Chrome extension. I wouldn't say I'm a fan of anti-hustle, but I aspire to anti-hustle. Unlike Sophia thinks, your value is I have to hustle currently or else I'll starve to death, but I wish that I didn't have to. Not measured by how many hours you sit in a chair. We're living in the era of hotkeys and AI. And that's where Magical steps totally. in to help you automate. With Magical, you can free up hours and hours of your time, which awesome. is almost as good as inheriting a bank, right? Need to fire off a quick email. Macros are one of the best things that you'll that you'll discover as someone who, who writes code. Finding ways to automate the things that you have to do regularly, figuring out what it is that you have to do regularly, and then automate it away is such a, a lifesaver. Email while you're overemployed and anti-hustling at the same time. Put a couple forward slashes and watch your words appear like well, magic. Maybe you're trying to network like an old money baron, but without the effort. Magical's AI reply feature works across Gmail, LinkedIn, and even Facebook Messenger. And, let's not and this is what people are doing. So um, a really interesting thing about this kind of work is that one of the reasons that people don't succeed so much when they don't have a lot of money is because they have to do everything themselves. And really, really rich people who have all of these assistants and people working for them to do all of this busy work that sucks up a ton of your day don't have to do that. And they can focus on just doing things that are very directly money-making for them. You can free up time, and time is the thing that that gets you to where you need to go to. I forget about the transfer feature because it's pretty mind-blowing. For example, when I was doing research on this video, I had tons of Wikipedia tabs open. I didn't know how to pronounce her last name. I didn't know that there were nine barons, and I didn't know that this was also a bank for really, really rich people. But instead of sifting through 15 different tabs about rich British people, you can just it's click just this AI magical button, and then you can click transfer to, new spreadsheet, and you can take all these other tabs oh, with really it. Cool. And I only have one page with all the information I need to That's do my research cool. off of. Gone are the days of individually typing out thank you or let's touch base go ahead and give yourself that break you deserve click my link down in the description or go to get magical work as little as you need to and then find really new and interesting ways to fill up that extra time that's what i think life should be about the the busy work just putting in sheer hours is is goofy as hell the fact that there's a bunch of old people out there i work 80 hours a week man yeah and you do the work of of one person who's super efficient in 10 hours that's what you do you're not you're not better than other people. Arguably, you're doing a worse job, and you have to be there for a super long time because you are super slow. 
chromecast.com and download the free Chrome extension. Who knows, with all that time you'll save, maybe you'll write the next scathing article on generational work habits or just enjoy your life. Your call. Thanks again to Magical for sponsoring today's video. Now, I want to show you a podcast that I found called What It's Like to Be Sophia Money Coots, where she bobs and weaves questions better than a lightweight boxer. The way she does it is hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait. You don't come from a background of journalism or even a creative background. I think your family's into banking. On my mum, my mum's side is journalist. Oh, really? Okay. Mad, crazy name, obviously, Money Coots, um, indicates sort of banking background. And that was like the family thing years, you know, centuries ago, it was the bank. Are you sure it was centuries ago? Because when I pull up the Coots Bank website here, it looks like I can become a client <laughs> right, right now. now. All I need yeah. to do is have 1 million pounds in investments or 3 million. That's another thing that people do that just irritates me is they'll go on podcasts and tell bold faced lies and then other people will take that lie that they said and just run with it and believe it to be true. That's such an insane thing. The fact that they're just putting out misinformation because they want to rewrite their own story, you have to live in the story that you're actually living in. You can't just rewrite it. I mean, you can if you have enough money, apparently, but like, come on, stop lying to the human race because you want to feel better about the fact that you had a better start than everybody else. Deposits, it's simple, really. But this was centuries ago, it's unrelated now. Just skip on to your journalism, to the part where she's careful about how she doesn't want to talk about being a journalist because of nepotism running wild in the industry, and then proceeds to talk about how she comes from a long line of journalists that are famous, and it's just really, yeah. Uh, my uncle Jeremy became a journalist and his sons, my cousins are now journalists. So on my mum's side, they're a journalist, but I suppose that yes, of course it might've opened doors for me, but I'm, I'm always trying to be a bit careful about sounding sort of too spoiled. You get accused so much of nepotism in this industry that in how I've got to where I've got to with journalists. People, people all want to feel like they've achieved something. People all want to feel that they're the ones who worked the hardest because they know deep down, that there's someone out there who came from a tree hut in Africa, learned another language, got on a boat, came somewhere where they knew nobody, and did such a good job here that they got the same job that they did. And they know they can never, they can never hold a candle to their story. And they know that genuinely, that person probably deserves their job more than they deserve their job. They worked way harder for it. And so if they admit that, then what are they going to do? Either they're a bad person or they give their job to a person who actually deserves it more than they do. So they have to create a story where they act like, oh, you know, I actually did work for this a lot. And yeah, you did. You put in effort. I guarantee it. You had to learn the skills. You had to go to school. You had to pay attention. You had to do all the things. But there are people who had to do all of that plus 100 extra things. And you, you might not be a person who would have been able to handle all of that. If, if there is some kind of giant plot line going on that's written out by a god who, who wants to write all history before it happens, then maybe you were put where you are because you couldn't have handled it otherwise. But I don't think you get to have it both ways. You don't get to have it that everyone can do it and also I super deserve this because if everyone can do it, you don't deserve it because... Everybody can do it. You see what I'm saying there? Because I hope that, yes, of course, it might have opened doors for me, but I'm contradictory. I hope that, like, a little bit of my own <laughs> talent has got me there as well, if you see what I mean. Editor Josh, you're chiming in you for hope. just a second. You're telling me that you convinced someone that wasn't a friend or a family member to give you a job and pay you to write about these topics? It's true, we millennials have never learned how to keep house. At the grand age of 39, I finally cleaned my windows. Why didn't I do this before? Which millennials? Why are Bro. you speaking for an entire generation? Yeah. I learned how to keep house at a very young age. It's clear from your background that you would probably have no need. If you I I had to clean as a child. That's that's what I had to do because my mom was busy. My stepdad was working. My mom was working, especially as I got into high school. I I, I did laundry and cut grass and, and took out the trash and washed dishes and wiped down countertops and would go outside and spray down the windows and squeegee them down and everything. This was this was the the work that needed to be done. And here's a sentence in the article. After several weeks of deliberating about whether to go to Google for a window cleaner, I decided to clean them myself. Not all millennials do that. Not all Gen Z people do that. Uh, that's more of a privileged person. Thing. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't have the money to have somebody come in and clean my house. If I did, I would spend it. <laughs> if I did, I would, I would have them do my laundry for me. Because, man, sometimes you need a freaking break.
a huge exaggeration to say most of us haven't kept house before. We've likely grown up with parents or even cleaners keeping things tidy. Wait, just stop. Just stop typing. Just... No. No. Here's another article that's just dripping with excess snootiness. All this fuss over the PM's pool is missing the point. Indoor pools are, quite frankly, vulgar. The I only... I only swim in my private pool that's filled up with Evian bottled water. The liner of the pool is diamond encrusted because that's the best way to keep your water from accruing bacteria, don't you know? What did your full service pool boys teach you when you were young, huh? The upper class prefer a freezing outdoor pond. Indoor pools are quite simply festering hot tubs designed to show you have money to burn. If this is what you came in early and stayed late to get better at writing about, then this is the joke of the century. Gatekeeping indoor and outdoor pools. I'm not convinced <sighs> that someone saw value in paying you to do this. I mean, look at some of the other no. articles she has. I was raised in Land Rovers. Can I grow to love something else like... Didn't ask. A car to love it. In Ineos Grenadier, I have never heard of that vehicle. I don't have <laughs> I don't have the net worth to have heard of this vehicle. But she's not too privileged. No, no, she's not too privileged. Just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Tighten them up a little bit more. It's not that hard. Raised in Land Rovers. Can I grow to love something else like to didn't ask. David. I, I know that, that the majority of people who will probably watch this video can empathize with this, but, you know, as someone who grew up poor and, and still lives in a, a, a pretty, you know, affordable place, let's say affordable to be nice, in a neighborhood that's less than premium, in a city that people do not want to live in, I don't think that people like this could handle it. I don't think they could. If they were dropped into my situation, I with and and they had the exact same skill set that I do and they had the same upbringing that I had, I don't think they would just well, I just know exactly what to do. I don't think you would. I think it was I think it was everything that you had been given, and I know that you had to be the right type of person to absorb it, and I know there's plenty of rich people who do literally nothing important with their lives and struggle with that like crazy, but I'm a pretty industrious kid, you know? I've, I've worked really hard over the course of my life, and uh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know what a, an Aeneas whatever is. I barely know what a Land Rover is know what a Range Rover is. I only know a Land Rover because my friend's mom dated a doctor when we were in high school and he had a Land Rover and that was a big deal for some reason. The Cameron's 25,000 pound shepherd's hut looks Could go underwater now. I read some of those articles like five times and I still have trouble understanding why anyone would care. All right, back to the article. So she hustled all the way up to grandpa's company yeah, by using course. doors that open from family connections, not nepotism, and then no, writes an no. article about how she out hustles all these lazy girl jobs, which I think is interesting because- Lazy girl, website, what's a lazy and girl her job. biography section really quick. You can scroll down to where she talked about working as the features director at this company for five years where she wrote about Dukes and Labradors and Prince Harry's love life while also working on her first novel. That's her out hustling Gen Z, putting them to shame, writing about Prince Harry's love life and dogs. Getting paid a salary to do that is a joke and they're getting paid probably 120 grand a year, an insane amount of money. The lack of self-awareness here, again, you don't have to be smart to be posh. Proving that over and over. She has a picture of her early attempts at writing. I don't know if this is true, but it would make sense if it if it is. Today, my family and I went to the Gold Cup final of the polo. There oh was an Indian goodness. princess who gave the cup to the winners. Again, this is interesting to me because I wasn't at any Golden Cups with any princesses or princes. I was learning how to clean my room, you know, the thing that you claim we all don't know how to do. So now that I've properly <laughs> filled you in on who she is and where she's from, let's hear let's what the silver spoon it, sounds like when it taps to make an announcement. Have you heard of the phrase, I hustle? I hadn't until this week, the sheltered being that I am, but apparently it's quite common now and increasingly used to refer to jobs. Bro, it's, it's, this is, the, this might be the most self-aware person ever. This kind of content does well for this specific reason that it is infuriating to read. And just because these people actually live this way doesn't, you want to believe it's satire. 
you want to believe that it's written by somebody who actually doesn't behave this way, but there's a whole nother thing that is just rage bait. And I think that people are doing this on purpose. She doesn't think that she's not a Nepo baby. She knows she is, and she's trying to convince you that she doesn't know that she is so that you get angry with it and interact with her to make her more famous. Because at the end of the day, the amount of people talking about you is the only thing that matters in this world anymore. You will sell as long as people are saying your name. You could be the most hated celebrity ever, and you still are a celebrity, and that opens doors for you. It's, it's so backwards compared to what we, what we think of as being important, especially as people who are raised with morals, as a lot of us have been. But man, that's what I think is going on here. I can't imagine that someone is this dumb, that they write this first phrase of, I hadn't until this week the sheltered being that I am, but apparently it's quite common now and increasingly used to refer to job adverts. Like, she literally calls herself sheltered. What are you talking about? How do you not know that you're that you're a Nepo baby? Job adverts, job adverts that promote a work-life balance. They're anti-hustle, you see, because they don't advocate a ferocious, exhausting kind of labor. Instead, they offer a role which allows you to skip merrily from the office at 5 p.m. No hustle required. How come hustle only seems to apply before working hours and after yeah. working hours? You can't hustle while you're actually at work and just get more done. You have to be there. You have to be around with your butt in the seat so you can be seen. Because it's a cult. All jobs are cults. Have you ever worked somewhere and you don't play the politics? Have you ever noticed how you don't get anywhere that way? I did the best at jobs when I would stay there for as long as possible. I, I would work at a restaurant and I'd be at the bar after I got off my shift and I'd hang out and I'd try to take care of stuff as it happened. That's when I did really good at jobs. It's because people like the people they're around because the people who, who are in charge have to be there most of the time. And if you make their life easier, they'll make your life better. You're not getting paid any extra money. You just have more power and more doors open for you. You get to go on a vacation with the higher ups or something, but it's still just all nonsense. If you're someone who wants your life to be the thing that's important, not the boss's life, then you're not going to do well at a job. It's just a fact. Because managers have problems with object permanence. According to a new survey, the number of anti-hustle job adverts has shot up over 30% since the pandemic, with many more of them now emphasizing their work-life balance to entice younger workers who won't tolerate the sort of hours that Scrooge went in for. Man, for And that's the thing, too, right, is that managers aren't going to do your job, period. The stress in their mind comes from the fact that they have to do the things that they have to do. Yelling at people, uh, uh, handling situations, things like that. And so being a suck-up to a manager doesn't mean doing your job really well. It means doing their job for them. Do the schedule for your, for your scheduling manager. See how much more they like you. I bet it's a lot. Do your job really well, and they don't care. That's what they hired you for. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do your job. I shouldn't have to do my job. You should also step in and do my job for me. I'll keep the salary of my job, and you'll keep getting paid for what you got hired for, but that's what you should do. Someone that has a name like you, to mention Scrooge, I feel like your name's more on the money. Why don't they want to work long hours? Is it because productivity is not related to hours? Is it because work is an activity, a behavior, not necessarily a location? Or is it more than likely they just won't get anything if they work those extra hours? No compensation, 100%. no rewards, nothing. Just more nothing work. at all. It chimes with what I keep hearing from my peers that Gen Z, the 20 somethings coming up the ranks behind us, are increasingly aware of their rights and exercising them. Why is that phrased as if it's a bad thing? Yeah. They don't want to work long days and know that their employers can't make them. They want a life out. Don't the poor know that they're supposed to fall in line? Don't they know that they're here to serve us? Let them eat cake. Inside the office. They are, in other words, anti-hustle. You see how laughable this all is now, especially when you know her background. If you would like a life outside the office, because remote work just doesn't exist. Even though she works at home alone as a writer, as it says on her page, if you want a life outside the office, you're anti-hustle. It's similar to- You okay back there? <laughs> The viral phrase lazy girl jobs, which a 26 year old coined on TikTok last year to describe decently paid. A 26 year old, a journalist who isn't quoting sources. This makes me so mad. Quote Frizzy Princess 36 or don't use what they say. You know who they are, you know their age. On TikTok, TikTok isn't the source. The person is the source. TikTok is the medium. You don't just quote a magazine, you quote the author. 
That's how that works. Oh, that makes me so mad. These people who say that we're entitled when they don't know how to do basic shit. It, oh, it makes me so angry. Which required minimum input and maximum flexibility. To which I would say, well, didn't we all want a life outside the office when we were in our 20s? But I want never gets. That's not true. You just couldn't figure it out. And it's a lot <laughs> easier to point the finger at other people and blame them for being lazy than, you know, saying I wish I was smarter. And, you know, <laughs> you're smarter than I was. No, nah, nah, don't look inward. Look outward. They're lazy. You out hustled them to an totally. almost pathetic extent. I did everything that was asked of me. I made 42 billion cups of coffee. I bought my boss's tights. I trialed Beyonce's maple syrup diet and Madonna's cardio regimen. I stayed late and came in early, extremely early some days, once at around 4 a.m., having spent the night loitering in a West End club trying to winkle out a quote from the son of a recently disgraced MP. It's like UK Carrie Bradshaw. Almost hear Sarah Jessica Parker's voice in my head reading this, you know, like when it narrated the transitions of the scene in the show dude it's a few insane years later, working for a different newspaper and that's the thing too is that people want to complain about doing the dream job i think that's one of the things that frustrates people most about musicians or streamers is that once they get really really high end into their career they start to complain about things that people wish they were doing. And those are still totally valid complaints. I don't think that other people having it harder than you negates your struggle, but I think that you also need to know what room you're in and know that when you have people who wish they were you, maybe you just should shut up about it. You get what I'm saying? Paper. I arrived at 7 a.m. and left at 10 p.m. most days. If I ate from the canteen and didn't leave the building at lunch, I didn't see much daylight during the winter, but it's what I felt required to do to make a success of the chance I'd been given. Plenty of wannabe journalists have swapped places in an instant. I didn't want to be replaceable. Congratulations on chasing the carrot on a stick, but I have yeah. some news. It's not up to you if you're irreplaceable or not. It's up to the boss. Unless you own the company, unless you have a controlling stake, it's really not. I'm just going to skip Oh, wait, but her family did own the company, so... This middle section is boring. Uh, contrast that with the situation now. A friend who works in publishing recently told me it's getting increasingly hard to find employees who will help book at launches in the evening because the junior staff in her office down tools at 5 p.m. She says it herself, I've been to quite a few book launches and they're not all glamour. She says, presumably you might be interested in going to a few and learning about the process of ushering a book into this world. How are you going to advance if you aren't willing to work a bit of overtime? Do you want a job or a career? There's just no motivation for employees. I don't, I don't mind working a bit of overtime, but you don't want to work in a restaurant. And that's what most people have available to them. Chopping down trees, working in a restaurant, here going into the coal mines. And those people do work a bunch of overtime. And they don't get to be somebody who a podcaster wants to talk to. I, I get that you think that because you work this overtime, you're somehow better than all these people. But there are tons of people who would have done exactly what you did if they would have had the opportunities that you had. If they would have been able to do all of that and have food catered into them or had the money to buy the food to come into them and have someone to wash their, their clothes and make sure that everything was taken care of and didn't have to have all of this extra struggle on them, they would have traded places with you in an instant. There's... You would not have traded places with a person who was born in Alabama to a family that lived in a one-room hut, and they would have traded places with you. How, how is this an argument? How do I have to say that out loud? But people just don't grasp it. It's to play this game as much if they're not in control of moving up. And more and more people are realizing it. It's just a game of what narcissistic personality traits do you need to appease to be able to get that promotion 100%. and stop chasing the carrot on a stick until you get the next promotion. I'm just gonna skip the rest because I've had enough of her snootiness. If those coming after us are changing workplace attitudes, do some of us feel aggrieved because of the effort we put in, or is it jealousy that they're somehow so assertive? I can't imagine having the self-assurance at work 15 years ago to pack up my- Well, this is how I know. This is how I know, right? This is, this is why I feel so confident in these kinds of situations. Because I genuinely go into a job, and I look at what everyone else does, and I look at what I do, and I go, oh, I'm doing way more than them. Okay, so I'm, I'm on paper more valuable. Now, are you going to reward me for how much better I'm being? Now, I know there's a, a time period which you have to pay your dues. Totally cool with that. Or are you going to reward the people who are kissing your ass? Okay, well, if you're going to reward them, I'm going to leave. And you, can, and you can deal with this. And you work enough of those jobs that you can see them before you go into them. And then you stop applying. 
And then what happens is all these people write these articles about how we're all so lazy. No, I figured out a way to run my own business and I figured out a way to, to stay at home and do the things that I need to do and I don't have to work for these people anymore. Fix it, fix the problem, do the job, figure it out. And then when you're willing to take, to take me back in the capacity that I demand, then I'll come back to you. But that's probably not going to happen. What's going to happen is that people who are capable are going to start businesses. They're going to have some type of, oh, I remember all this from when I was younger. Let me find the right people. And then that's what's going to happen. We're going to reward the ones who actually do the job. That's what will happen. These people won't fix anything. They're going to die first my desk at 459 and stroll out guilt-free and yet I would still humbly suggest that if you have any ambition you need to do the time if you want to do the time do it for something for yourself learn a new skill try to make a side hustle whatever it is spend it with your family I mean more gatekeeping I, I mean she cares about what type of pool you have at your house if it's indoor or outdoor and she makes opinions on what's being posh and how cool, like, who cares? So because she didn't have boundaries 15 years ago when she was working her way up, that means now she out hustled all of yeah. Gen Z and put them to shame. I'm not sure why people like this are constantly given platforms to say this dumb stuff, but I appreciate the content nonetheless. Well, it's rage baiting. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And if you do to. as well, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to see more of it. Leave a... You guys, hit, hit that like button for him. Josh is a cool guy and he makes cool stuff. I like him a lot. Um... Yeah, you know, it is what it is. It makes me unbelievably angry. I get a little bit irritable when I start talking about this kind of stuff because it's so obvious to anyone who's been in this situation before. The people who work the hardest are very often not the ones who get rewarded. Um, now, that that obviously can be completely false, and I've worked in places before where the people who actually work really hard do get rewarded and good for those people, but most of the time, it's just the people who suck up the most. It's it's the people who have been there the longest, who have built the relationship over the longest, and and that's, that's fine. It really is, and what I think, like I said, is going to happen is that the people who are really hardworking and responsible are going to build a better world just like it's always happened, and the people who are these nepotistic babies are going to ruin their parents' companies over time, and they're going to fall apart, and then they're going to blame the millennials who don't want to work and who don't come out and spend money, and they're too busy buying groceries, so they're not paying money for a subscription to my magazine anymore, and that's what's going to happen. It just is what it is. Yeah, whatever.